special offers with partnership casinos, and, and this is where it gets good, a free inside cabin. Let me read the small print. It is Sunday, December 3rd, 2023, and on this week's edition of Sunday Sofa Time, we're talking about gambling to get a free cruise. It is a total winter wonderland here in Northern Europe right now. It's been cold and snowy for days and my fingers and toes are now at the time of the year where they're just gonna be cold until like April. In today's video, I wanna talk about something that I've been curious about for a long time and up until recently, I didn't really have all the information I needed to talk about it. I feel like the cruise lines have kept it kind of a mystery. How much money do you have to spend in the casino on a cruise ship until you start getting good things, including a free cruise. I'm Morgan from the very unofficial travel guides. I've been making travel videos for 15 years of popular and not so popular tourist destinations to give you a very honest, unofficial look at what it's like to be there. In last week's Sunday Sofa Time, we talked about reaching diamond status on Royal Caribbean, what that means, what are the goodies I receive now on my next cruise because I am diamond status. And the comments on that video have been super interesting and helpful. Uh, for instance, somebody mentioned that now, if I'm diamond status on Royal Caribbean, and uh, not only does that up my status on celebrity automatically, but you also get a high status with MGM rewards. So if I or if you are going to be going to Las Vegas, make sure that you get the status match there because there's some nice benefits there as well. Then during the week, not only did I post the video explaining how to take the Brightline train from the cruise ports in Southern Florida, but I also went on a little field trip to see Madonna in Berlin. I made a video about that, but I realized most people were not interested. The video is not just about the concert, it's about taking the train there and walking around the Christmas market and things like that. But apparently so many of you are not interested in Madonna that even two people unsubscribed. He's making videos about Madonna now? I'm out of here. Don't worry. I won't be making any more videos about Madonna. And next week, the videos from our journey on the Celebrity Equinox are starting with my day on Grand Cayman where we kind of got tricked by a taxi driver. You'll see what that's about when the video goes online on Wednesday, so make sure you're subscribed if you want to get updates about when all these things happen. All right, I have a list here of all the rewards, and it says here, the rewards are in your favor. And just like in last week's Sunday Sofa Time where we talked about all the rewards of making diamond status in Crown and Anchor. I'm not gonna go through everything here. Don't worry. I have known for a while that if you spend a lot of money in the casino on a ship that you can get goodies for that. But it was never clear to me how much do you have to spend. I had met people who had achieved this, but whenever I would ask them how much they spent, they would always just say, it's a lot. And I don't know how long Royal Caribbean has been providing this amount of transparency, but here it is. For those of you who don't know, when you are gambling in the casino, if you are on a slot machine, you can put your cruise card in the machine and set up a little account, and then you collect points. And depending on how much money you spend and how long you play, that's the more points you collect. It's a pretty, easy to understand concept. If you're playing table games, then you have to let the pit boss know that you wanna collect points and they will pay attention to how much your average bet is and then they will like manually assign you points after you're done playing. So let's start with the lowest level here and then I'll talk about how you can get to that level. The first level is called choice and that is for anybody between one and 2,499 credits which is quite a bit, and this is the lowest level. So basically, after you've earned one point, you already get point redemption towards onboard expense account credit or as free play in the casino. So if I understand this correctly, and this is something that I have used on cruises, even my recent cruise on the Independence of the Seas, which is also coming up on the channel, after you've played like $20, you might get like one free dollar then to play with in addition. It also says here, instant cruise reward certificate, and I'm not sure what that is. The fine print just says, based on gaming activity during current sailing. So 
I'm not sure what an instant cruise reward certificate is. If you know, please let me know in the comments. Then, this is apparently a new benefit because it says new right next to it. You get an Effie Boutique credit at Regalia Fine Jewelry on applicable, applicable ships of $200, which sounds like a lot of money, but the fine print says, it says it's valid on white tag items over $2,000. So in order to get the $200, credit, you need to spend at least $2,000. That sounds like a great benefit. Then skipping way down past a lot of the benefits that the higher levels get, it says here you can get exclusive casino offers and access to Club Royale VIP events. I'm gonna skip right ahead to the next level because that's where it starts to get really interesting and then I will tell you how much money you're gonna have to spend, like the minimum amount of money that you're gonna have to spend to reach this level. This level is called Prime and it is starting at 2,500 credits until 24,999 credits. That is a huge span of spending. With this thing, you get the same things that the choice level gets your Effie Boutique credit goes up to $250 if you buy something that costs more than $2,000. Then you get a waived convenience fee for cashless wagering on your CPass card. I guess that means if you are using your CPass card to like get money out of your account, you don't have to pay the convenience fee. This is where it starts to get, I think, really interesting and attractive, and that is you get complimentary drinks in the Casino Royale. Small print says, complimentary drinks in Casino Royale only apply when the Casino Royale is in operation, which means if you are in port, the casino's not gonna be open and you're not gonna be able to get those free drinks. You also get a discount on internet packages and then going down to the cruise planning benefits, also the exclusive offers, the VIP events, and then a tier priority contact number, exclusive rates for family and friends for additional staterooms, special offers with partnership casinos, and, and this is where it gets good, a free inside cabin. Let me read the small print. Complimentary cruise applies to select ships, not applicable to sailings longer than seven nights, limited to one per year and based on double occupancy. So it kind of sounds like once you reach this level, you can pick just about any cruise you want and book an interior cabin for free. Plus, get free drinks in the casino. So that is saving a lot of money, but how much would you have to spend to actually reach that? Well, if my calculations are correct and they very likely might not be. It says you have to have 2,500 credits. And in order to earn a credit, according to the Royal Caribbean website, you have to spend at least $5 in the slot machines. It doesn't list how much you earn if you're playing table games because that's always something that depends on your average bet and how long you're playing and then how generous the pit boss is gonna be, I guess. If it's $5 equals one point, then we need to divide. Uh, am I gonna have to do math? 2,500 divided by five? No, it's 2,500 times five, right? Which is $12,500. Did I do that right? You have to spend $12,500 in the casino on one cruise? to reach this level. The thing that surprises me probably the most about this is that there are people who do it. And I'm not shaming anybody. If I had that kind of disposable income, I would spend way more time in the casino because Marcus and I really, we enjoy spending time in the casino, but we've spent, you know, like at the most on a transatlantic cruise, maybe $150 in the casino. And of course, one factor of this is you might not have put 12,500 into the machine or onto the table. Of course, you're gonna be winning a little bit, hopefully. And so some of your winnings will count to the money that you are putting back in. But still, that just seems like so much money. And I don't know, <laughs> I guess that's the answer to the video now, should we stop? You have to ask yourself how many free drinks are you gonna be drinking and what does an interior stateroom cost on a cruise and deduct that then from the 12,500 that you have to spend to get there. But 
still doesn't really seem like a good deal to me. I mean, of course, if you win some huge jackpot of like 50,000, well, you know, no, it still doesn't make sense. I was gonna say then maybe play 12,500 of it in order to get these benefits, but if you got 50,000 in your hand, just use that to book a cruise. Dumb idea, Morgan. Let's skip over the signature level and go right to the master's level, which is 100,000 or more tier credits, which if my calculations are correct, that means 500,000? Can that be right? Please somebody correct me if I'm not doing this right. If $5 equals one point, then 100,000 points equals $500,000, right? But if you reach this level, not only does your FE Boutique credit go up to $550, you get all the other stuff and then two free internet packages, priority entertainment access and dining reservations, onboard credit, what's the small print here? Onboard credit amount varies based on voyages duration. It'll be $50 on a three to four night sailing, 75 on five to six to night sailings, and $100 on seven night sailings. That's like kind of a joke, actually. If you've given them 500,000 in the casino, them giving you a $50 onboard credit is kind of just like a slap in the face, isn't it? But you get priority access at the terminal. This is something I don't quite understand. Carry on bag, onboard, drop off with priority delivery to the stateroom. It sounds like when you take your carry on on board, there's somebody there who will take it to your stateroom for you. Not sure why you would want that because aren't you just gonna go there on your own? A welcome lunch in the main dining room featuring Chop's Grill menu. Well, that's kind of a nice thing. This is also something kind of nice. It says you get coastal kitchen access. Coastal Kitchen is the sweets only restaurant that serves like a little bit of an elevated menu. Marcus and I have eaten in Coastal Kitchen a few times and it was very nice. And then you get a flexible departure with a la carte breakfast. In addition, the cruise planning benefits, one difference there is instead of getting an interior cabin for a free cruise, they offer you a grand suite on a free cruise. But honestly, I kind of feel like if you spend 500,000 in the casino, not only is that the least they could do, but you can probably afford your own grand suite, right? Like I said, Marcus and I enjoy playing in the casino, but now that I have seen this all in black and white, I kinda know that this is just not a goal that I'm gonna set for myself. You will not be seeing videos from my personal experience of what it's like to be prime signature or master's level in the uh, casino rewards program on Royal Caribbean. And let me just say it again, I'm not shaming anybody who has made it there. If you have, good for you. Do you wanna adopt me? Use some of that money that you've won in the casino to buy all your friends a copy of my book, Getting Stitches on a Cruise Ship. It makes a great stocking stuffer and it's available on Amazon now. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments. I'm really interested in hearing if you are in one of these higher levels, how this compares to other frequent casino player programs on other other cruise lines if you know about that. And speaking of comments, now comes the time on Sunday Sofa Time where I comment on your comments live on air. In last week's Sunday Sofa Time, I talked about our really excellent experience taking the Brightline train from West Palm Beach down to Fort Lauderdale and using the sort of automatic Uber transportation to get from the port to the train and then from the train to the port. These comments are on that video. The first one is from Quincy Uber Vegan. Quincy writes, Hi Morgan, I'm an Uber driver in my 10th year. Regarding Uber and Lyft, instead of asking the driver who he or she is there to pick up, know their name, match their face and vehicle with the photos that's on the app and greet them by saying, Hi, name, thank you for picking me up the driver will replay, will reply and say your name. This is referring to my noticing that it's kind of tricky getting an Uber in Florida compared to other places because you see the license plate number in the app, but no cars in Florida have license plates on the front of the car. So Quincy's recommending from his point of view as an Uber driver to 
greet them by their name and then hope that they say your name and that's how you'll know you're getting into the right car. Thanks, Quincy. Next comment is from Joyce Hardy. Joyce writes, thanks for sharing this information. Since I'm in Orlando and cruise frequently, it takes three hours to drive to Fort Lauderdale and four to Miami. My concern about taking the train was lugging the luggage. It's nice to find out it gets checked in and to have the Uber arranged is great. I've stopped staying in a hotel for Fort Lauderdale. Now I can skip it in Miami too. What I save on hotels easily would pay for the train. Really great point, Joyce, and I'm glad to have helped you figure that out. Final comment is from Bill Snyder. Bill writes, we just rode the Bright Line from Orlando to Fort Lauderdale for our cruise from Port Everglades. Beautiful train, nice staff, and we caught a cab to our hotel since it was dark when we arrived. We live in Ohio, so we won't ride often, but locals should use it. Yeah, that's been my experience as well. It's The trains are so nice, nicer than the trains here in Europe. If you want to compare, you can watch my Brightline video and then watch the Madonna video because you'll also see a little bit of what the trains are like here. Not horrible, but they're just not as nice as the Brightline trains. Thank you for spending this part of your Sunday or whatever day it is with me. Please give me a thumbs up before you go as a little early Christmas present. Check back soon for that video about Grand Cayman and I look forward to seeing you back here on the very unofficial travel guides. Bye-bye.